All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. It's time for State of the Nation, and my guests are with me here, Dr. Kuro Court, Party Leader, Third Way Alliance, Willis Etienne, Deputy Party Leader, Safina Party, and Reverend Canon Evans Omolo, Provost at the All Saints Cathedral. Thank you for making time. We're still talking about the link between politics and religion. <coughs> also, mm -hmm. we're talking about what next is the biggest question. The President has made concessions, turned a memorandum to Parliament, on Article 115 saying he will not sign it and he's recommended a deletion of all the clauses, essentially finishing the finance bill, the finance bill conversation, but also calling for dialogue between the Gen Zs on how they want to be governed. But first, let's bring up some of the tweets coming through this morning and see what you're saying here. Hanifa, one of the people who are believed to be the one of the leaders, she says, this isn't over. It's not over. Just stay away from state house. Cook me all you want. We can match anywhere else, but not state house. Don't go to state house. Do not go to state house. Okay. Let's see what else you're saying here. Still, Anifa says, please do not march to state house. Please stay safe and do not go to state house. That is not like parliament. Please do not go there. Okay, we'll talk about that shortly. So still another tweet from her. Shanky here says, do not occupy state house, comrades. It's a protected area. Yesterday, they killed so many Gen Zs who occupied state house, Nakuru. Okay. Let's not verify. Those are statements coming from online. Yaki Muzi says, occupying state house is tantamount to treason, though. We still push tomorrow, which is today. If genuinely you have feelings in Asira, you shall realize kutakuwana bloodshed and we shall achieve nothing. Don't breach the walls, but let's move forward. Kuna many government offices to start with, okay? See what else you're saying here. Tasty Kipsoed says, so what we end, end, be clear. It's not about what we end, end, it's about being logical. I'm one learned individual. So there's Gen Z speaking to themselves about the protests that are meant to happen today. Don't go to state house, my dear comrades. That area is a no-go zone. It is written and no one will take responsibility but the Constitution. I'm as angry as you. Okay? Still on the same, the Deputy President had this to say. Let's listen to him. As Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, and a patriotic son of this country, I want to appeal to Generation Z to call off the protests for tomorrow because their cry has been heard by the president. The president has accepted that there was an issue, there was a disconnect, and the president has done the right thing. And I think it's only fair that we call off the protest so that we don't have further loss of lives and destruction of property. It's an appeal that I've made as a father as a parent to our young children. We love you, we respect you. Please, I beseech you as your father, now that the president has given in and accepted to go with the wishes of the Kenyan people, please, my sons and daughters, I plead with you to save lives, to save bloodshed, to save loss of property and lives. That's a threat. Reverend, isn't it? Is He's it, threatening. What do you threat? He's pleading. Why, why, what, no. what, what, what are you saying? Yes, Reverend, yeah. isn't it time to call off the protest now? The, the executive has made concessions. They're saying, fine, uh, we've had you. Trevor, Trevor, two things from me. One, um, and, and, and you know, I'm sitting with uh, a, a, a deputy president aspirant and a presidential aspirant. So yeah. these two can form a party and uh, <laughs> march into state house and form government. I am a churchman, and my position is this. You can be a minister of religion. Let him finish his position. My position is this. Yes. That with the conversations that are happening, what the president said, what the deputy president uh, said yesterday, and some of the tweets that you're bringing out, I don't think it's logical to march to status. Do you know what marching to status means? It means that Ruto ceases to be the president of the republic, and that we go Sri Lanka. You remember what happened in Colombo? in status in Colombo. And that, that simply is, is it. Uh, from where I sit as a minister, I'm interested in mediation, I'm interested in a conversation with accountability systems and instruments put in place that from where I sit excludes parliament because parliament has been a sellout, complete sellout. That in, excludes uh, people who have not given the president wise counsel, people who are around him who've not given him wise counsel. Mm -hmm. A neutral team that is representative, and as the deputy president did say there, uh, a carefully well thought out team that represents 
the interests and the aspirations of the Gen Zs, and then we have a conversation. Then the president is held accountable so that we move on, we correct this. But then uh, secondly, what we, what we are seeing is that uh, the government is crumbling. You have a situation where a junior officer in the office of the deputy president is speaking to his boss through the media. I advise my boss, I advise the president. Uh, president do this, president do this. It means they are technically not working together. Uh, that in itself is dangerous for this constitution. And from where I sit, these yeah. two are lawyers. Uh, I still feel that uh, this idea in our constitution of an elected deputy president alongside the president seems not to be working. We've seen it with uh, uh, Deputy President William Ruto when he was deputizing Uhuru. We are seeing it with Rigadi now. I think uh, not hangovers at all, but uh, the appointed deputy worked better for us because the temperatures are climbing. Imagine today if Rigadi came out and opposed the finance bill. Uh, or jumped out and formed this party and be, the country is going to collapse. So for me, I feel the institutions that have failed us, yeah. we must get a neutral team and a neutral party. And as you are trying to hint on the church, yeah. the church is not fully compromised, as you say. There's a section of the church that have been compromised in dealing with uh, the president. There are credible persons who still are available from within the religious space, both the church and our Muslim brothers and other faiths who can join on that table yeah. and have a very honest conversation that we may save this country. We don't want more bloodshed. Yeah. And I want to plead with the Gen, Gen, Gen Z, please don't march to state house. We have had, and, and, and I've been involved, you know I've been on the front line, let us not endanger more lives. Yeah. If we are to demonstrate, even today, Let's do it peaceful in non-protected areas <coughs> so that we don't shed more blood. Yeah. So, so Trevor, could, yes. uh, one of the things that for me concerns me listening to uh, <coughs> Deputy President, first of all, Article 37 of the Constitution of Kenya talks about peaceably, demonstrating peaceably. I was on the streets on Tuesday. There was no violence at all from, uh, from the Gen Zs. Mm. There was no violence. It is the police actually who initiated violence. So there is nothing wrong with people of Kenya expressing, especially their, their displeasure with government. So why not allow peaceful demonstration? Because people are peaceful. I mean, and, and I, I, I was those young people, and they were saying, we are peaceful. They were even telling the police, we are peaceful. We are peaceful. Just allow us to. They were chanting that. They were chanting that. We are peaceful. We just want to walk. Yeah. Yeah. When I listened to President, uh, Deputy President Gashagwa, I read a threat. Why will he be insinuating that we do not want to lose more lives? Why? Is it because they do not understand the Constitution of Kenya, Article 37, that says that you can, Kenyans can actually demonstrate peaceably, yeah? And therefore, the police should actually protect, give protection mm -hmm. to that peaceful demonstration. Yeah. Why is he insinuating on loss of lives? Because these people have said, and they, they, that's their chant, we are peaceful, you know? So I, I, I don't really buy yeah. into, into what Gashagwa is saying. First of all, let them, let them admit that yes, the police killed innocent Kenyans, peaceful Kenyans. Mm. With that killing then, let's see some heads rolling. Yeah? Can, can uh, today uh, IG Kome take responsibility mm. for what happened? Or that commander, regional commander, can they take responsibility? I think now going back to the, the, the question you posed, yeah. what should the conversation be? Mm. Lives have been lost. We have dead bodies today as we speak. Somebody was responsible for that. And who is that person who was responsible for that? Mm. Especially because young, these young people are very peaceful. I mean, some of us here who are fathers of Gen Z can confirm yeah. We were on the street. We were right with them. We were right with them. Mm -hmm. And they kept on chanting, we are peaceful. Okay. But it is the police. I even tried to go talk to the, some of the police officers, mm. myself. And I was tear gassed. But I'm wondering why. I'm just walking. I'm just, I'm just demonstrating, exactly. saying, we don't like this finance bill. Yeah. Please uh, do this. Eventually, we have indicated because the president has carved in and uh, admitted that this law is very bad. Yeah. After all, but it's not even written by, it was not even legislated by our own legislators. Mm. 
<laughs> this is come from? These are globalists, imperialists, okay. uh, telling us <laughs> how to run our country. And I think one of the things that really President <laughs> William Ruto need now to uh, take into consideration is actually being seen as a puppet of the Western Correct. world. Okay. That, that's, a, that, that's a conversation happening out there, mm. you know? So whether he likes it or not, you know, he's seen as a puppet. He is he's kissing too. I mean, uh, <laughs> excuse your friend. <laughs> now let's really, 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 should the protest now be called off? And let, now let the country tell, should let, focus let on you. how to get it away <laughs> forward. You know, you know let, let me tell you this, Trevor. One thing that we are all missing on this table, and you can spend the whole day pontificating and hoping. You're hoping for the past to come back. We go back to our normal. Mm -hmm. The people of Kenya have crossed the Rubicon. Mm -hmm. They have crossed the Red Sea. They are now on the shores of the River Jordan. They are entering Canaan. Nobody called these demonstrations. Mm. This kind of, what we are going through, there is no Kenya who has ever gone through this kind of a day. Mm. We've mm. never had the kind of multitudes that we've seen in the CBD and across the entire country marching. Even in the best of his political times, Raila Odinga never marched, number, marched those numbers across the country as they are coming out. Mm -hmm. Even when people are fighting for 2A <coughs> to be repealed, we didn't have those kind of numbers across the country. So I urge our people, you cannot, don't think that things will ever be the same again, which will never be. The conversation has changed. Power has shifted from the representatives back to the people. And up to this point, there's no face of what is going on. You cannot say, this is the leader. This is the person who called us out. Mm -hmm. But yet, people are coming out from their own corners yeah. to go to the streets. So, in my view, going forward, the state, or those who are holding office, must recognize that, hey, mm. whatever we are dealing with, we underestimated it. Mm -hmm. yeah. This country needs a, a new beginning. Then the second step should be, mm. the moment that you killed more than 20 young people has, that have been killed, and all of them have died in the hands of police guns. Mm -hmm. Not even a single person has been killed by, you know, by a civilian. Mm -hmm. All the deaths are from gunshots from the police. Mm -hmm. We've killed them. They are now emboldened. They're even telling you we're coming mm -hmm. to state house. They're not coming to state just because they want to, mm -hmm. to, to invade. No. <clears throat> You've actually shown them that you don't represent them. Until their first statement, you call them criminals. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, they became brothers and sisters. <laughs> actually, How do they ter believe actually terrorists. They call them no, terrorists. They call them terrorists. Them terrorists. So now, this is the point that I'm making. <laughs> Unfortunately for the church, Ekuru, those of us in political leadership, we've not fully appreciated what is taking place in this country. When I say the people are claiming their voice and they're doing it peaceably, you are not seeing a Kenyan divided along tribal lines, mm. class lines. No. Mm. I've been on those streets. Kenyans of all tribes are there, all ages, and all social class. Okay. They are not coming out and saying we are be because we believe in this one particular case. The only thing those people believe in is a Kenya of dignity, a Kenya mm -hmm. that let it now make sense to all of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if we don't <coughs> listen to them, and I'm sorry to say this, I can even stand up here and tell people, please don't go to state house. They will not listen to me. I'm not their leader. There's nobody who is anybody's leader in what we are going through. Mm -hmm. What we should be urging is our security officers. When our mm -hmm. people come into contact with you, do not kill our people. Absolutely. Because William Ruto being president, Rigathi Gashagwa being deputy president, even Willis Otieno being deputy president in the signet, is not more important <laughs> than the people of Kenya yeah. who are dying out there. Okay. Like, you cannot say that... Deputy President in the making. In the making, <laughs> yes. You cannot say yeah. that because Willis Otino must be the next Deputy President, I'm going to kill people. No. So also, for Rigathi Gashagwa, for William Ruto, we cannot say that if you go to State House, we are going to kill you. What I'm saying is this. No, no, just, Nobody's threatening. No, no, what I'm saying. They've said they'll they lots of lives. Yeah. We've all established. No, we've all established no, no, but they said they that lost, the deaths lost, that have happened, mm. we've established. All the deaths so far are caused by policemen or men in uniform. That's where the deaths are coming from. So we can progress to say that the expected death that the Kenya Kwanzaa seems to know about what they're talking about will only come from where it has come from before, from mm. the men in uniform. Mm. So what the conversation today should be this. Mm -hmm. Whenever our people congregate, and I'm telling you, these people don't have a leader. 
please, our men in uniform, don't kill our people. Trevor, Trevor, let, let me just yeah, finish yeah, it. Let let me just finish. I'll come to you, Reverend. Let don't kill our people. Mm. Okay. It is not worth even a single life to be lost for William Bruto to become president or for Gashawa to become. Why can't even, if the people are saying they are going to occupy state house, mm. if it's a question of Ruto's safety, they can evacuate him to another location. There are so many state houses. No, after all, he doesn't live in he Kenya. He doesn't even live in, yeah. <laughs> so, people going to state house, they can allow them to walk in, <laughs> let them have tea, let them meet their state house. It's their state house. Yeah. Then they will leave. If there be any damage, that's just furniture. That is just uh, Trevor, I have a, no, I have a, a, I have a historical <laughs> question. Let, 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 <laughs> what I'm simply saying so is, the yes. president is saying <laughs> if the demonstration <laughs> well, is going to take place in the state house and the people are the ones going to do it, let them do it. You can subsequently, once they retreat back home, you can go and take control. But what I am saying, whichever place the people have appeared to demonstrate, don't kill our people. Okay. I, 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 I have a rhetorical question. question. Only a question to one. Yeah. Yeah. Just a question. Is William Ruto Kenyan? <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. See, yeah. I resonate yes. with the side of uh, Willis's argument yeah. that uh, don't kill the people. However, I am not of the opinion that people go to state house. Um, the reason I resonate with the first one is because, Trevor, I saw this as uh, Okili here says, police officers indiscriminately shooting and killing mm. people and mm. throwing tear gases and mm. provoking. You know, <clears throat> for me, that's what the, uh, the part of it that I really don't like. People are peacefully chanting and just walking mm. Mm. and throwing tear gas right in their midst. And there is a police van just goes round. Mm. From all sense, it was doing round on that loop up to state house coming round. And just throwing, throwing tear gas and bullets going round. Totally, 100% provoking uh, mm. youthful protesters. That is what made them now want to charge. And, and I think I, I totally agree with that. Please, Inspector General of Police, we want to request, don't get your officers to shoot anyone. Mm. And, and, and secondly, really where we are at, uh, if the president wants confidence of Kenyans to get back to him, mm. between today and tomorrow, mm. he needs to fire some people. Okay. He needs to fire some people so that we see confidence. Like, for example, what, what, what's going on? What Deputy President was saying. How can you be a president and, that, and you don't know the intelligence? Many people knew what was going on, even mm. the ordinary Kawaida people. Mm. It means people are cutting off the president from information or they are pushing him to walk into a ditch. The president must get the head, some heads rolling yeah. between today and tomorrow, then that could No, it has to be today. It has to be today. But, but also, Kuru, before I bring you in, yeah. there's something here we are, we are not talking about. Mm -hmm. The legitimacy of the legislature. Mm -hmm. These are the same people Completely passed gone. that bill. Completely mm -hmm. gone. Now it's coming back to them. Mm -hmm. What will they tell the people? Because there's something here that the deputy president <coughs> said, though. So let's listen to what the deputy president yeah. said in terms of dealing mm -hmm. with the members of parliament who some people may be disgruntled with. Listen to this. Okay. I don't want you to punish our members of parliament. They just did what is right in terms of our political formation. Allow them to be. Allow them to support their government because that's why they were elected as members of the government party. Let us not harass them. Let us not abuse them. Let us not attack their properties. They were just doing what the government wanted. And now that the government has decided to do the right thing, I think we should close that chapter. And if you have a problem with your member of parliament over this matter or any other matter, you will have an opportunity at the right time to punish that member of parliament or affirm he or her by electing him or her. Yeah. Uh, to, to be honest, I'm, I'm so disappointed mm -hmm. listening to a person who potentially could actually be our president anytime. Should Ruto decide to resign or anything happens to him? Not that I wish him bad luck. He does not understand government or the state machinery. Parliament is not government. Mm. They are the people's representatives. It's not the cabinet. Mm. It's not the cabinet. Mm. To say that parliament did what government wanted mm. is so wrong. Mm. And for me, I'm ashamed that uh, <laughs> Rigadi Gashagwa is actually our deputy president. And I think for me, maybe the fundamental question and conversation, Trevor, should be, who are we actually electing as our leaders? Because when you elect a person like that, 
who does not even understand that there are three arms of government, the executive, the legislature, you know, and the judiciary, and, the judiciary, and that the legislature actually is supposed to, uh, to oversight actions or, or excesses of government. But do the MPs themselves understand that? That's why I'm saying, then that is the fundamental question, the conversation now we should take to Kenyans and say to Kenyans, who actually do you elect as your leaders? Yeah. Mm. Do you elect people who actually represent you? Mm -mm. Because ideally, as a member of parliament, I should be able to say, this law is being passed. What is the impact of this law to my constituents? Mm. Yeah. The people who actually elected me. What does this mean? That is the conversation that must be happening in parliament. You know, and, and so far, I, 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 let me acknowledge the fact that some members of parliament have really uh, been, been honest to say mm -hmm. we don't have a parliament. I mean, I applaud people like Otiende Amolo, uh, not because we worked with him on the committee of experts, and um, a few other members who have said actually parliament has is, is been bought. So the, the idea of representation, they are basically, in, as we all know, there are three cardinal mm -hmm. responsibilities of parliament. Mm -hmm represent because that is the starting point you actually went to the constituents, say to the constituents yeah. elect me to go and represent you then i'm going to pass legislation or policies or whatever that actually you know um do not harm you and then number three i'm going to oversight government of the day mm. so when when you have a deputy president saying that you know forgive parliamentarians because they did what government said I mean, come on. But it also goes full circle to the people themselves who elect because it's not like they're forced. They, they have, they have <laughs> and, a and list Trevor, of people and, and they tend to pick who they believe and Trevor, representing them. And Trevor, that is the conversation now we must have going forward. And I'm really hoping that you people in the media, because you have a constituency yourself, mm. for example, mm. can actually uh, propagate that conversation on a daily basis, educate Kenyans and tell Kenyans, you know, look, I mean, and we are learning a lot from now this finance bill, from the, uh, from the demonstration, uh, up to the president actually rejecting the, the, the bill entirely. So now we are telling the people of Kenya, okay, so who did you elect? Maybe that's a question. And I hope you guys in the, in the media yeah. can actually continue this pumping, this conversation, yeah. this question on, on, on Kenyans, so that Kenyans now, in 2020, in fact, no, 2027 is too far. I think we, we, need, to, we need to do something today. Um, so people then, then need to ask, is uh, Willis Otieno, I don't know why Willis doesn't want to be president. He keeps on saying he wants to be deputy president. Jimmy Wanjigi is president of this. Doesn't want to upstage his party leader. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's that's not to pull off. Uh, uh, <laughs> he's, being, he's being loyal. <laughs> yes, he's just, <laughs> only for now. But, only for now. No, but yeah, we don't know what will happen. Let me bring in Willis, actually. Because, Willis, both of you have actually been in the ballot. Mm. So this is a conversation that you can't just squarely blame on the members of mm. parliament. They Trump. are elected by the people. Mm. The people have choices, they pick the best out of them. And it then comes a situation. No, I think they, they, pick, the worst, now they says, pick the worst out of the best. The president now says, do not punish them. Because we've <coughs> seen the punishment, actually. Most of them have, you know, for me, have been vandalized. No, for me, Trevor, they will, pick the worst out of the best. I will always defend the people's choices and when they make them. Yeah. Because they make their choices on election day based on the facts as presented to them. The fact that people have elected you does not mean that they've given you a carte blanche to go mm -hmm. out there and misbehave. Mm -hmm. So there's no member of parliament when he's being elected ever stands up to say, when I get to parliament, I will increase your taxes. Mm -hmm. When I get to parliament, I will not listen to your voices. The people are very trusting. So the people are lied to. The people are lied to. William Ruto promised the people of Kenya that he will never raise any tax mm -hmm. when he gets into office. He said it mm -hmm. during the campaign. Now, he gets into office, and the first, some of the first things he says they may part Nalipa CG 14% GDP to tax, revenue to tax GDP ratio. Mm -hmm. I will make sure I increase the 21% GDP, revenue to GDP ratio. Now, on the campaign, you said you'll never increase it. In office, you are promising them pain. Mm -hmm. So, on this, the people are innocent. It simply means that no. at the point of no. voting, no, no, let me okay, think. I'll give you a chance. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> tell me which member of parliament <laughs> or which president went to say, I will increase taxes on you. There's nobody who did that. You may say people are you are paid or are bribed to vote. That's different. I'm not talking about governance. There is not a single politician on their manifesto who promised pain to increase taxes, not to listen to Kenyans 
once elected into office, mm -hmm. the people are innocent. Okay. What happened is this. Once these people got into office, they changed. They now decided to create a cabral. So William Ruto as the head of that cabral and the members of parliament as the sheep that follow him. So they just wait for him to make a bleat and they continue with the meh in unison. That's why he tells them, go and pass this finance bill. And they all say, yes, we are going to pass it. He tells them now, retreat. I'm withdrawing the finance bill. You see all of them clapping. They are no longer representing the people as a court is saying. Mm -hmm. It simply means they've converted themselves. Mm -hmm. They've actually conducted a civilian coup on Kenyans. They've created, there's a mafia sitting somewhere that is now running a country called Kenya. And the people are far removed from it. Now, what I must say is this, as I conclude. I saw some images. I was locked up in Holy Family on Tuesday when now the live shots became too much. But I managed to see some images. And I could hear the rapid gunfire of uh, people now in parliament. And some members of parliament kept calling, asking for rescue. For the first time, mm. there was fear in the <laughs> members of parliament. The same group <laughs> that just a day before yeah, had told yeah, members of parliament off. that we have enough security. <laughs> we don't need, these people will never get here. We'll vote as we want. Now, there was fear in their voice just to hear that the voters are coming to visit them, are coming to occupy parliament. Because remember this, there was nobody who was saying we are going into parliament to beat a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. The protesters never said we are going to beat members of parliament. They simply said we are going to occupy parliament. The hard stance came from William Ruto and his people. Kome saying, nobody is going to type into parliament. I will deploy enough security. Kimani Chungwa throwing words everywhere, showing a very hard stance, Kifua. They want to rule people by Kifua. But there was never any member of the city public saying, we are going to parliament to beat our members of parliament. Nobody ever said that. Then they simply said, we are going to parliament to occupy it. Mm. Now, what I'm imagine those of us who are in this public space, and unfortunately for those in leadership, not even, not even leadership, those in elected, of elected officials, yeah. those who are elected officials, the time is up. You are only aggravating the situation when you don't read the signs of times. Okay. All of them, their time is up. The national conversation should be, because going, they are all going to go. Going, I can assure you, all these leaders are going. Yeah. What we should be discussing, if you really care about Kenyans, is the terms of their departure. Which the deputy president and is saying in 2027. Their, no, 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 I'm Our telling you. Democratic unfortunately, I will wish, as, 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 a, as a running, as a pre deputy president for the candidate, <laughs> I will wish to wait for 2027. That will be my wish. That's my wish. Because it gives me even time to campaign, to explain to the people uh, what I stand for. But I have that luxury of time. The people of Kenya don't have that luxury of time. That is why they are out there. Mm. As you are talking, people are being told that go, don't go to state house, you'll be killed. But I assure you, they don't fear anymore. They've crossed the Rubicon. Okay. Things will never be the same again. So <laughs> those in elected positions, I don't call them leaders for today. Yeah. I just urge them, please, going, you will go. Uh, that, has, that, that is done. What you should be doing, focusing on, is cause the least damage, yeah. minimal damage or harm as to the people exit. of Kenya as you exit. Okay. Because if it becomes that as you are still trying to be intransigent, to dig deep and cause more harm, mm. the consequences will be dire. Yeah. You. And I love Rigadi Gashagwa for taking the first initiative to actually, by his press conference coming out of the president, to communicate mm. that I am not part of any planning that will be lead to the death of any Kenyan. Yeah. I've not gotten any security briefs yeah. about the situation that will warrant me to sit in a room to plan for the killing of any Kenyan. Okay. Trevor, Reverend, are the people really innocent Tre Trevor, in this? Trevor, Trevor, you know, our electoral process yeah. has become an enterprise. <laughs> it's a pure business. Mm -hmm. And that is why in Willis's village, you'll have a member of parliament running for office, but then what they do is to get business people and everyone else who is in contracting to finance their campaign uh, for a job that pays you just about a million. They do a campaign of over half a, half a, half a billion 
to get into parliament. And so what happens is that uh, we are not choosing leaders based on conscience. We are not choosing leaders based on uh, credibility, track record, and what they are going to do. We are choosing leaders based on who can give me food to eat now. And you know where that problem comes from? Yeah. Is because at the very base of our societies, people are poor, people are struggling. And that is why they build little kingdoms around themselves and then they get elected to parliament, they pledge allegiance to a government that then gives money and buys them, by the way, uh, allegedly for things like voting like this. Uh, members of parliament are bought as low as uh, 100, 200,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. And so they create proximity to power. You're so, so that you're, you're too generous, 10,000. 10, once, <coughs> once, once I am closer to power, all the contracting jobs, all the businesses, I do them. Yeah. And all the allocations that come even to the county or to the constituencies, they only release for intended use less than 20%. The rest they eat. So one of the things the president must deal with, and that conversation, one of the agenda on the table of that national conversation is corruption. Because government is aiding corruption in this country to levels that have never been imagined. Imagine yeah. a presidential candidate uh, spending 4 billion shillings mm. to campaign. You're a mathematician. Uh, how much does it cost a president? To, how much does a president earn in a period of five years? Mm -hmm. Is incredibly less than that. It means government is a place of looting, and that is why all these things are happening. All these raising of taxes, all this stuff yeah. are about what then will come back to me. Then when I build myself as a big man, yeah. I can go back, drive big vehicles with a convoy. Yeah. But then I'm told today there are no convoys. Uh, all their flags they've removed, all the chase cars they've removed, they are all um, uh, undercover. You're scared. It's, it's because. <laughs> we are financing extravagant lifestyles and thievery. So electoral process has become an enterprise. Yeah. Members of parliament go to parliament, not to represent, as Dr. Kuru said earlier, but to further the interest of uh, the executive. It then means yeah. that uh, as a constitutional lawyer, we should just amend our constitution and say laws are made uh, by cabinet, uh, uh, on the direction of the president because parliament has failed. Trevor, I want to hammer that. Yeah. Parliament has failed and yeah. we allowed those who saw sense and were raising very logical questions on the floor of parliament uh, that this thing is going to harm the people. At the very base, yeah. I must make a point as I conclude, is the economy, the lifestyle of the people. Businesses are crumbling. Yeah. People are running out uh, of, of, of resources. Uh, that's why it, it will be tough. As Willie said earlier, uh, the momentum will be tough if you don't fix yeah. jobs, if you don't create uh, opportunities for business to grow. Yeah. That will equally be an agenda. Yeah. Growing of businesses and sealing loopholes for corruption. And it's interesting that you're there, Reverend, because you're still on the floor. I keep doubling back to this issue of dialogue because this really is the way to go. Exactly. But we haven't cracked how to do it. Do you now speak yeah, yeah, to yeah, sector giving... by sector? In fact, but before you answer that, in fact, let's bring up what the president himself said on the dialogue conversation. Mm -hmm. Let's hear him verbatim so mm -hmm. that we, we, okay. hear, we can talk about it. I will be proposing an engagement with the young people of our nation. <laughs> our sons and daughters. For us to listen to them, as I said on Sunday, listen to their views, listen to their proposals, their ideas, their concerns, and what they think we should do better as we go forward. I am also recommending a multi-sectoral, bipartisan, multi-stakeholder engagement from civil society, religious organizations, professional bodies. In fact, you mentioned reverend. So which, which form as religious bodies, not as you as reverend, mm -hmm. which form should it take? I keep doubling back to that because we somehow haven't cracked it. It's mm -hmm. a statement that has been made. Yeah. So what happens? Do you speak sector by sector? Then they give recommendations and they say, you want one, two, three, four, five. Then you say now, okay, parliament can enact this through this bill. Or do we have a national conversation with everyone and their recommendations are brought to parliament? I, I think what from, shaped you this day? From where I sit, Trevor, and, and, and we must remember that uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the aftermath of the election, of last, last election, uh, sections of the church, even my archbishop, 
National Council of Churches of Kenya, the Conference of Catholic Bishops did raise that issue, and the Secretary General of NCCK, who is my good friend, Canon Chris Kinyanjui, did raise that conversation that we need a national dialogue to address the ever teething problems and the issues that are now coming from this questionable quote unquote elections after it went all the way to the Supreme Court. And so that <coughs> would be still a thing to revisit, a national conversation. Then we identify representations, which are the credible sectors to be represented. The religious space where I'm in, uh, a section of it has been compromised. I'm not afraid to say here on national uh, television, a section of it has been compromised and have failed the prophetic test of speaking to the king and telling the king that you're naked, and therefore identifying sectors within the religious space. Uh, we have three broader groupings, especially for the Christian faith. Uh, we have the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops that has been fairly credible, and, and you saw their statement last time. And so when we say the church, please I want to avoid, ask to avoid this issue of bundling the church altogether. You, you've heard how solid Archbishop Muheria has been uh, on the front of KCCB. Then we have the National Council of Churches of Kenya uh, representing uh, interests of the Protestant churches. Then we have the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya equally representing. I, I know several of our Pentecostal churches uh, were friends to the deputy president. Many, uh, some of them got uh, favors, some of them got job appointments, some of them, their children were appoint appointed X, Y, and Z, I don't want to mention here. <laughs> And therefore, is to look out. How do we create a representation? Then we have our Muslim brothers and sisters. Then we have other faiths. And then we move on to other sectors. And Gen Z's, for me, will drive that conversation. Mm. As, as Willis did, I don't know if it's Willis who said, uh, whereas they're leaderless, there's some sense of guidance that can be provided. Yeah. Then we have that. For me, I've given you an agenda. We must deal with corruption. Mm. We must deal with expenditure. And we must deal with institutions that are not delivering and see how those institutions can help serve Kenyans. Okay, and uh, uh, Guru, should this so, take the form of BBI, so that at the end of the day there's so, something uh, yeah, so, so, presented in the So if I, if I listen to the president, uh, the president is basically telling us, let's go back to BBI. Um, <clears throat> BBI, I mean, or the bombers, whatever, NADCO uh, report, was just a hoax, I mean, it was a lie to Kenyans. And, and I believe that um, Kenyans needs to go back to when you are seeking public office and you make promises, do you actually fulfill those promises? If today President William Ruto fulfilled the promises that he made to Kenyans in 2022, we will, be, yeah. we will not be having this conversation about whether let's have a national dialogue or not. You know, you said you're going to form a government of uh, what a wheelbarrow, what a mijengo, you know, Mamamboga and the rest. So if you believed in that, then don't take us on a merry-go-round, uh, or I mean, as Willis will, will have put it, ping pong. Is it what was that? Picky, picky pong. Yeah. Picky, picky pong. Keep on coming this <laughs> so, <laughs> so, if you really believed in, in what you said in 2022, yeah. and you are fulfilling it, then don't, don't pick, take us to picky pong king or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So we should not be having this conversation that, oh, let's have a national dialogue. What for? Okay. In any case, now that you have agreed that this bill is bad, then there is no need for a national conversation or another conversation, OK? Uh, just do the right thing. Okay. And, and by the way, let me just remind William Ruto this. When he claimed he cried out loud to say that President Uhuru Kenyatta was um, uh, persecuting him. And he told President Uhuru Kenyatta then, come after me, leave my children alone. Yeah. Those are his words. Mm -hmm. But today, his administration is killing our children. You know, the 22 dead bodies or more are our children. Yeah, way more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so why then doesn't he also act by what is he said? Because that time he said, you know, uh, <coughs> please, watch out to Angu, come after me. Today we are losing our children. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the conversation we should be having, uh, Trevor. And politicians, when they make promises, maybe that's why Willis and I are not uh, president or deputy president of this country, because Kenyans also don't listen. 
I think Kenyans also need now to sit back and say, okay, can we uh, really critically evaluate or analyze the promises we are being exactly. given? Exactly. And then can we make the right decisions? Who are we electing office? Can you imagine today, I mean, I don't want to mention names here, but some unscrupulous individuals are actually the face of leadership in this country today. For me, I feel embarrassed as a Kenyan because when you think about Kenya, uh, you know that uh, we are one of the most educated countries in sub-Saharan Africa. Mm -hmm. But look at the face of our leadership. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I've said it many times, uh, Trevor, uh, I'm, I'm lucky I've traveled a little bit in the, in the continent and in the world, especially speaking about our constitution making process. Yeah. And one of the things that people really applaud of Kenya is the chapter six on leadership and integrity. And I keep on repeating it mm -hmm. because people keep on asking, um, hey, you, this, that is one must be one of the geniuses of Kenya's constitution, that you actually wanted a certain type and character of leaders. Mm -hmm. But how is it that you guys elected two ICC suspects? into office. And of course, one subsequently became now our, 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 our president, actually all of them, uh, you know. So, so that is one thing that may, maybe that should be the conversation. Mm -hmm. What is the conscious, the soul of the nation of Kenya? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe that's something we should be discussing. Okay. Are we Kenyans actually conscious when we make our decision? Okay. Are we truthful? Are we truly religious? Yes. As we, as we, uh, so the people are not innocent the way Reverend Willis. No, no, not necessarily. Okay, let, let's hear Willis. Let me say this. You know, <laughs> in your form of this dialogue, how should it be? Well, um, let me just say like yes. this. Today is going to determine that form of the dialogue. Because we are going to test, the people of Kenya are going to test William Ruto's commitment to his words. Because the dialogue process, once it started, you cannot, the first, remember Kindiki came out to issue a press statement on Monday evening. Hmm. And even said, people will be doing it so peacefully, the police will provide security. The next day, early morning, the police came out full, with full force in Nairobi, with a view to beat up, hmm. disperse the protesters, to stop them. There was, everything Kindiki said was a lie. He actually said the opposite of the deployment that they had. Mm -hmm. William Ruto, as we are talking now, he has promised these same people that, oh, let's have a national dialogue. I love to tell Kenyans, anybody who will go near that man will go down with him. Because everything he does is a lie. I'm telling you, there is no leader to what is going on. And those who have attempted to even come out to claim I'm the one leading, or I can speak on behalf of. You know, the church here, Reverend can talk today and try to blame Kenyans. I'm sorry, Reverend. This one, I must hit you very hard. I'm not blaming Kenyans. <laughs> I must hit you very hard. Please bring it. <laughs> At All Saints Cathedral, yeah. my welcoming church into the city, William Bruno took over 20 million shillings alone to build what? They never asked him, where did you get this money? <laughs> yeah. Speak the Cash truth. Cash money. Speak the truth, really. The president, when he was DP, went there when they were doing their fundraising, took 20 million, and the clergy was clapping, Reverend Wainaina was, I don't know it was standing there uh, clapping loudly. <laughs> then now you want to blame Kenyans, that Kenyans vote for these people. Why were you clapping for him? You knew very well his salary was one million shillings per month, and you are receiving 20 million from him in one day. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Okot here, my brother, Okot, we were with Okot in the struggle. Mm. In fact, we were being blocked, the unfairness to yeah. both of us. Yeah. I couldn't even believe that Okot, who had even been cleared before by the same party, <laughs> was being blocked. When an injustice was being committed to him, we went with a court. Mm -hmm. We were saying, this is unfair. We must fight to the end. Mm -hmm. I saw a court going to vote for William Root. Now you are blaming Kenyans. <laughs> I mean, we must take personal responsibility for our decisions. <laughs> so I am taking personal responsibility <laughs> for my political decisions. So I am urging you, yeah. before you start talking about Kenyans, <laughs> please do your own self-introspection. Yeah. Once you do that self-introspection, don't blame Kenyans. You, as an individual, take action. Mm -hmm. That is why, for me, I have done my self-introspection. I have understood my participation or my convenience to this political leadership, that, this political officials that we have. And I've said, I'm not going to be the first person to stop a Kenyan who has shown strength of character and has shown courage to come out to claim and assert that our country is not being led in the way that we desire. As I sit here today, I want to make this to be my concluding remarks. Dr. Margaret Oyuga, 
Rex Kanyeki Masai, Franco Koth, Nick Adams, Eric Njeru, David Chege, Ian Kea, Belinda Chieng, Edwin Otieno, Eric Otieno, Eric Sheni, Besli Kamau, Erickson Mutisia, Credo Yaro, Emmanuel Kata, <coughs> Ibrahim Kamau, Wanjiko. These Kenyans did not deserve to die. Regardless of whatever William Ruto wants, regardless of what my personal views are about William Ruto, these Kenyans have named did not deserve to die. And today mm. is going to test William Ruto's commitment to whatever he has been saying. Okay. If any single Kenyan dies today, then everything that he's saying is a confirmed lie, and I don't see at any given time okay. whether we'll ever have any dialogue with anybody. All right. You've all been adversely mentioned, so I'll give yeah, you a so, so, uh, You know, uh, Safina, <laughs> Safina, uh, but not deputy, not deputy, deputy, deputy president, it is I, don't know, I don't know how many votes he got vis-a-vis -vis the spoilt votes, but uh, <laughs> he, he was not in the ballot. No, no, the ballot. Oh, yeah, he was in the ballot. So, Trevor, uh, first, let me just correct on, uh, on, on public TV that uh, Willis is mentioning figures that are untrue, and I think as a lawyer, he knows the place of evidence uh, and facts as far as uh, mentioning stuff is concerned. Uh, in that moment that the deputy president then uh, came to All Saints, he gave a donation because we are doing a project. But remember, and over, this, over how much? this is where people miss the fact. Uh, he gave, uh, I think it was about eight million. Okay. Um, for and record. And promised how much? For record. No, no, no. For record. Uh, Still doesn't take away the point Willis made of, course, yes, of his course, salary. Of course, of course. Yes. Uh, point taken. But people forget that that became a learning curve for us. And right after that, the Archbishop, Archbishop Jackson, issued a directive across the Anglican Church that we will not be inviting politicians to our fundraisers. Mm -hmm. And you can see up to now, no one has come. We've done projects. We've, we did a, a one billion project at All Saints Cathedral. That was the only money that you can count that went into that thing. No politician came. Even those who worship with us, many of them worship with us, both from government, from legislature, and across the civil society, across the, the, the public service, they don't come for fundraising. So we, we redefine. There's always a time where you'll be rained on, then you pick up your lessons and you move forward. So you learned your lessons. Okay. We did, yes. we did. Okay. All Saints remains, let me not say the only church, but among the very few churches mm. where no politician will come, one, to speak from that pulpit, whether it's a funeral or anything, not at all. And two, where they'll come to launder their money and hang their money, okay. not at all. all right. Under my, my former boss, Wainaina, and under my watch, and even previous time. Yeah. So, so let, let me clear that. But let me, let me move on just to say something, <coughs> as, uh, as uh, I know you're about to bring the show to an end. Um, Trevor, I, I, think, I think what Ekuru said earlier, that what, one of the things we lack in this country, as far as governance is concerned, is accountability processes. So when we elect people, when the president promises this, when the governor promises this, mm. a member of parliament promises this, but then we cheer them on to election and swearing in, but there is zero accountability on those people on the promises they made. Look at the, the, uh, the president alone. If you began to analyze mm. every single thing that he promised and you want to tick, <laughs> I doubt you'll even do 10%. <laughs> and that for me is where the problem begins. Yeah. You go to my member of parliament, Honorable mm. Tienda Molo, a very learned lawyer and solid. Uh, I mean, even in terms of presence and making an impact uh, in the constituency, and Honorable Tienda Molo uh, from Rarieda, please do note, we but want at least we'll tender more like yeah, we, 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 we want proper representation and we want to see uh, you holding accountable offices that are meant to release resources to us uh, because there are lots of even development that are meant to be us but instead of representing the people I know we make a lot of noise very good ones at the national level yeah. but I would wish to see accountability processes and systems that is what we lack if okay. we did that yeah. then at the end of the term we audit and we, you, you just see by yourself and okay. say hey me I don't I don't measure up all right yes. cool. so so for me my concluding remarks will be uh, to read to you a message from Anthony Muithaga who is watching this show and this is what Anthony Muithaga says tell Trevor those sons and daughters are dead. Dead in the sense that their hopes and confidence in there has been diluted by sulfuric acid of lies, insatiable greed, selfishness, tribalism, and nepotism. And he says, Ruto must resign today. 
and that I think is part of the accountability we are talking about. Okay. Let's take on some of the feedback and then I'll come to my guests for closing remarks real quick. There's a lot <coughs> coming through here. Let's read them really fast at Trevor Mbija at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Citizen Daybreak. Then I'll give you each just a minute each to give your closing remarks. Alexi, hello Alex. What we the Gen Z and millennials should focus on is cleansing parliament. Let IBC commission be formed ASAP. We need to begin collecting, uh, recalling signatures. Mm. We shouldn't let the MPs that failed the nation get away with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And boys for change, you say, tell the president to take a look at what the Gen Z's has done. This is a sign that they are watching his government. Listen to the young generation. Okay. Let's see what else you're saying. Dr. Michael says, I squarely apportion blame to the advisors of the president. They failed to appropriately admonish the head of state to avert the crisis we witnessed. But I laud the president for boldly dissenting and withdrawing the bill. Let's be unified, okay? Agumba Steve says, our challenge as a nation is having legislators who cannot reason on their own. Puppets, psychophants of the ruling government. Look at how they have been exposed. You fight to vote yes, only to be disowned. It's high time our legislators be what? I don't know what you wanted to say there. <laughs> and in the end, we should learn on peaceful protest and build infrastructure for it. There's never a need to break a fence or to shoot people. We should make a way for people to sing songs and for public officers to hear those songs and chants. Okay? Okay, Lomolimu says, going by DP Gashagwa's body language, it seems like the truthful son of Ruguru village still has more confessions to make. <laughs> He's likely to take advantage of the current public outcry to pour out his anger and frustration. Kidogo <laughs> too, The pastor is here to receive the confessions. <laughs> Anata says, with the finance bill withdrawn, the protests would have no motive. It would look like an attempted coup. Okay. Gabi says, the self-proclaimed truthful man told the nation he was listening to the ground. The ground was speaking against the bill. Now where was he to advise the president before things go wrong? He must also accept that he failed us as a nation. Okay? Remy says, there is need for a genuine national dialogue where all citizens will come together as equals and talk about issues that generally concern them. This dialogue should never be seen as an uh, event, but rather as a process. Okay, let's finish up here. Gadua Gashora says, all arms of government are dysfunctional. The government seems to be in a jumble and the people are hopeless in them. The two presses by President Ruto and DP sounded rumbling. The biggest issue with the citizenry is trust, as His Grace says. Okay. So Nixon says, Honorable Mudavadi said recently that the finance bill is the foundation of the government in internationally. And if the bill fails, the net effect will be the government being removed from power. I beg to be explained mm -hmm. how practical this is. Okay. Let's bring up one last one here and see what you're saying on this conversation at Trevor Mbija at Citizen TV Kenya. And this is from Mwishimiwa Robert Alai. says, whoever is now mobilizing young people for further protests is killing their legitimacy and destroying them that they will not be taken seriously again. Don't go to state house. If possible, don't even protest today. Okay, final words, uh, Willis, and I'll start with you. And there's been something that we didn't touch on, but you can mention it really fast. There's an, a, a series of abductions from yeah, uh, police mm -hmm. officers, mm -hmm. and then they're taken to different mm -hmm. places. Somebody's arrested here, taken to Kajiado. Is that even constitutional? Fact, and and the deployment of the KDF. Has there's, even, there's even a, a court order yeah. that anybody who has been arrested should be arraigned in court. It is quite unfortunate. Last night they picked Joshua Okayo who is the president of the Kenya School, law, Kenya School of Law Students. Mm. My friend, Kasmuel uh, Makoure. He plays in our church. Yeah, I was also, I'd also been picked. Mm. Yeah. And you know, that's what I say. Mm. I don't believe William Ruto. Mm. And no Kenyan believes him. You can't be saying that you, are, you want dialogue, you want a conversation, mm. but you're still picking those who are perceived. These are not even leaders. Mm. You just perceive them because maybe they have an next account that is active to be leaders, and you arrest them. Gabriel Oguda, was taken all over mm. the country, I mean, the Nairobi and its environs, only to land up in Kajiado and nothing done, to, I mean, no charges. Uh, Nyerere, the lawyer, mm. was dumped in Gataka Forest, late in the middle of the night to be eaten by INS. I mean, how do you believe such a person when he tells you, let's have a conversation, national dialogue? I believe where we sit today, Kenyans will not have a national dialogue with William Ruth as president because of his conduct. Mm. You should start by doing things that inspire confidence that will make people want to sit down with you. You can't be giving a press at four 
and at 6 p.m. somebody is mm. being picked. I mean, it beats the whole purpose. You can't be saying, Parliament, that you're saying we should go back to. Parliament illegally blocks people from uh, the views of people. When people turn up for them, they block Parliament. Then the state deploys KDF at night. Then the same Parliament quickly reconvenes in the morning to try to legitimize the, the deployment of KDF that was done at night already. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's no longer an institution that can be trusted. Okay. The same parliament, when it goes to State House with Ruto, you see them clapping that the bill is very bad now. Mm -hmm. After doing all that they could do to pass it, now the bill is very bad. Trevor, my yeah. parting shot to Kenyans is this. Things will never be the same again. Okay. We've lost trust in these institutions, and even if they attempted to conduct a dialogue, that will be a dialogue just to facilitate their exit. Okay. This country will only get a reset yeah. when the people have an opportunity, sooner rather than later, okay. to go back to the ballot and choose a new set of leaders okay. who will now oversee the transformation. Of All right. Ekuru, one minute as you close. So, for me, I'll just say this, uh, uh, Trevor. I think um, in governance, you know, in constitutional law, we say that there is uh, accountability and President William Ruto has spoken, Gashagu has spoken, but is there really an admission of the wrongs, of the mistakes that they have made? I don't hear that. You know, like Willis has said, and I don't want to repeat, how do you talk of dialogue when you are actually that innocent Kenyans who are just speaking their minds, who are just expressing their freedom of expression constitutionally? I think for me it's wrong. I think if really there is any uh, any opportunity to believe in the government of the day, whatever that may be, at least show us some actions. Let's see some resignations today. You know, uh, IG Kome, who, by the way, I mean, if, you, if Kenyans can recall, yeah. I think during the, uh, the past regime, he was actually throwing stones at, uh, at the demonstrators during the Mandamano. So let's see some resignations, at least today. Let's, let's, let's be told who actually are the cops who actually killed the 20 plus Kenyans? Who abducted Gabriel Oguda mm -hmm. on these other people? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why, why take them around? You know, we want to see that. That's accountability in leadership. And, and for me, I think the talk of dialogue is a completely useless, misplaced conversation right now. Okay. We, want to, we want to see government speak uh, the truth and believe in what they promised Kenyans. Okay, Reverend, final Very remark. Very quick, um, I would have spoken about the abductions, but I will not. But our hearts go out to people like Kasmel, my good friend who plays in our church, who was abducted. Thankfully, he was released last night. One, uh, we want to ask the president through his troops not to disrupt peaceful protests, not to throw tear gas, tear gas canisters at them, not to shoot at them. Please peaceful protests should be allowed to go on as provided for in Constitution Article 37. Those who are planted or planting themselves in between, the police have a system of picking them out and dealing with those who are destroying property X, Y, Z. Secondly, uh, I would want to ask that uh, the Gen Zs restrain from marching to State House because that will have catastrophic consequences as much as my colleagues think differently, but rather organize themselves in a manner that will be beneficial as far as conversations are concerned, so that from where we sit, we don't destabilize a government. We encourage and support the president, for me as a pastor, to stabilize the government, see his mistakes, make confessions where necessary. Then we support uh, creating accountability systems in this government that will ensure our taxes are used to well because the taxes that we raise from where I sit are sufficient to run government and we have a surplus that will go towards development. All right. Thank you so much for making time this morning, gentlemen, Dr. Kuru Court Party Leader, Third Way Alliance, Willis Utieno, Deputy Party Leader, Safina Party, and Reverend Canon Evans Omolo, Provost at the All Saints Cathedral. Thank you very much for making time and speaking to us on the State of the Nation. We're taking a quick break. When you come back, it's time for cooking tips, all right? Thank you so much for watching Daybreak. See you in a bit.